You have talked about earning your knowledge. How do you, def man, you guys, you put up some viciously good questions today, man. I got to say, these are tough questions. They're very good questions. So this is Devin M. You've talked about earning your knowledge. How do you define this and earn it? When is it okay to debate ideas like yours if they are not your own? Well, I would say it's okay to debate them right away if what you're trying to do is to test them and learn more about them, right? But it's not okay if you're trying to put them forward as if they're your own and to obtain something approximating unearned moral superiority by doing so. So that means to have the ideas and to discuss them, but not to identify with them as if they are defining characters, defining features of your own personality. How do you earn knowledge? Well, you know how your elementary school teachers, when you're writing an essay, said you got to put it in your own words? Think, well, what does that mean? You can't just copy a sentence. It has to be in your own words. And, you know, to me, that was never very well explained to me, but there was something to it. It's like for knowledge to be yours, you have to integrate it with your own experience. You have to see how that applies to your own case and then have a story to tell about how that's the case that's personal right so it's the intermingling of the abstract with the personal that makes it real it's the intermingling of the epic with the particular or the archetypal with the with the concrete that makes something real and so if an idea is still an abstraction if you're just parroting it it also means that you haven't learned to use it as a tool. You haven't started to apply it in your own life. Because you could say, well, here's an idea that I came across, and here's how I implemented it, and here's what I learned when I implemented it. And then that's definitely yours, right? Because you are you can kind of tell because you're recounting your knowledge in a manner that no one else could do. And, and that's what gives it that ring of genuineness, right? You, that's what it means in some sense to speak from the heart. It's like, well, here's my experience with this idea. And you can say too, well, here's how I understand this idea. And you reformulate that in your own terms. And that means that you associate it with your own, with the own, with the unique particularities of your own experience. And then I would also say it means that you've acted out the ideas and tested them like in, in the world and that you have your own stories to tell about that. And, and that's how you make it your own. It's like you, you go to the tool store, the hardware store, and you buy a hammer, you know, and then you start to use the hammer to hammer in nails and you learn how to use the hammer, you learn how to use the saw. And then, you know, at some point that saw sort of becomes yours. You know how to use it. And it's the same with these ideas. It's like, you don't just, you, you don't just say the words. You're not just a puppet mouthing the words. They become part and parcel of your own philosophy, the way that you perceive the world, the way that you construe things and the way that you act in the world. You've tested them and you have your own, you have something to add to them that's yours personally. You know, and if, you, if you're having a discussion with someone and they're talking about things that don't have those characteristics, right? That they haven't made personal. Then the conversation is almost never interesting. It's because the person is, it's just an, they're just, they really are an empty shell through which ideology, ideology cliches and slogans are pouring. There's nothing about that that's compelling because you don't see the grappling you don't see that the other person has grappled with the ideas and come to their own unique conclusions. And it really is in that mingling of the abstract and the particular that compelling wisdom is to be found. And so that's, that's, and then concretely speaking, well, there's ways of earning your knowledge. And part of that is reformulating it in your own words. That's thinking it through, right? And discussing it until you have it at hand. You can talk about it and you can generalize from it because you truly understand it. But a huge part of that is also putting it into practice and deriving your own conclusions as a consequence. And some of that can be done with debate. It's like, here's an idea I came across. And 
here's the idea and here's what I think it means. And this is how I think it would change things if I put it into practice. This is how I understand this idea. And what do you think of that? Like that's a good debate or discussion, you know, because then the other person can say, well, I don't really agree with the way you formulated that or I don't agree with your conclusions. And hopefully it's a real discussion and not just one-upmanship, you know, because that's a pretty dull game. And then, oh, then you get clearer about what it is that the idea is and how it is that you would use it as a tool in your own life. And that's the right way to think about ideas too, you know, as well, partly they're, they're tools for looking at the world with. Because you have to look at the world with tools because you can't look at the whole world. So you're looking at the world through a tool-like structure and then the ideas themselves are tool-like and they need to be used and, and worn a bit in your hands before they're, before they're yours.